Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. We are going to check out a special selection today, which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's special selection comes at us from Carl, television by Warrior Soul. I don't know anything about this. Who is Warrior Soul? What is this album art here? Uh, and I always excites me. I have no idea what I'm in store for. This isn't even a band I've heard in passing. So let's check it out and see what Warrior Soul is up to with the track television. Lots of bass right at the start of the track. Yeah, this is real fun right out the gate. Really catchy vocal line right here. I think I know this band. But I don't know what song I know them for. Yeah, a really nice three chord turn that we have in the chorus there. So that last guitar lick, the dun 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 it's only uh, three beats long, polyrhythmic against the four that everything else is on. Yep. <laughs> um... Yeah, this is uh, this is real nice to, to come back to. Um, not too much to rack my brain over. It's a fairly simple song, but it, uh, it does pose a bit of uh, a clash with what I was expecting from our opening. It is very punk. We have our core verse riff. Bum, bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, bum, ba -dum. One idea repeated over and over and over. Very rhythmic. The melody itself is catchy, only being three or four notes long. 
but it's primarily about that rhythmic syncopation that can play against the straighter uh, quarter notes that we're getting off of the drums. And so we get this really nice syncopated back and forth between these, uh, these offbeat and frequently shifting rhythmic patterns in the guitars and the very rigid drumming that we're getting out of the, the drums. And of course, over that, we have this catchy vocal work, right? We have this, this melody line that's just got a really nice flow to it. Uh, it's got a little, bit, a little bit of melodic movement, so it doesn't seem dull, but it's not too much where it's difficult to catch on to the pattern, which is the whole thing about hooks. You got to make it memorable. Yeah, everything about this verse just kicks off in the right way for something that's uh, what is this, pop punk, maybe? It feels a bit more aggressive than I think of pop punk, but, uh, yeah, I'm, we're just gonna roll with that. It is a very catchy style, less uh, abrasive than something like hardcore, um, and seems to be a, a very palatable mix of the punk sound with catchier hooks. Um... And we shift over into the chorus, which trades our syncopated guitar lines for chords. Uh, we have a three chord structure. We have a low one. We have a leading tone that resolves. We start back at our uh, root. I think that's how it was. Da, 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 da. Yeah, and the first one was weighted. Like we get two groupings worth of our first note, and then one grouping of our third, and one grouping of a fourth, which gives us four groups fits well within to the 4-4 four, four time signature they're using, um, and the pretty standard four pulse concepts are utilizing underneath to craft the rhythmic structure of the track. And we get a couple of these back and forths. Two, I think. Verse, chorus, verse, chorus. And then we go into what I thought was a bridge, and it kind of introduced uh, some new concepts, a new vocal melody, um, but a lot of it continued on with uh, the stuff we had already been exploring. It was a new section, but not new content, if that makes sense. Um, it, its primary job was to shake things up, present something new to the listener, so that we don't have uh, the, the repetition of the constant verse chorus bouncing back and forth, um, while not breaking the sonic landscape or identity of the track. I think it does a great job of this. We come back for another verse and a chorus. Now, I honestly thought around this time we were done with the song, but when I looked, we were only about two and a half minutes into it, and I remembered it being over three, so we still had some stuff to explore. Uh, I was really curious where they were going to take this, and that's when we got a second bridge, which is interesting in multiple ways. First of all, bands don't do two bridges. A, B, A, B, C, A, B, D, B, I think is the ending structure of this. Um, it's really interesting to get three pockets of the verse chorus. Our first one is a double. We have a verse chorus, verse chorus. Then we have a bridge, verse chorus. Uh, bridge number two, maybe just a chorus, maybe a final verse chorus. I can't remember if we did both there or not. Um, it's It's just a really interesting way of utilizing this very standard structure and sort of just tacking on to it in a very proggy way. You know, we talk about this, I'm going to sidetrack this a, a hair here. We talk about a lot of uh, modern prog metal um, where they'll take a riff and maybe it's seven beats long and then they'll just cut off the last beat. So we have a six beat variant of it. It doesn't change anything. They didn't resolve it to fit better in six beats. They just cut an end of it off. Or maybe they'll also turn it to a nine beat and they'll just repeat beat six and seven on eight and nine. So again, not really adding to it, just repeating what we've already had. And this way they can take one core concept and expand it and compress it um, in ways that don't change its identity, but allows them to play around with time feel. Um, and that's kind of what I feel like they did here. They applied that same concept to the structure. They took the standard verse chorus, bridge verse chorus concept and said, well, what if we just take that bridge verse chorus and do it again? Um, and it's really interesting take on it, uh, which even just kind of furthers 
the thing here in that this is very palatable pop punk. Again, I might be a little off with that, but it is poppy vocals or poppy catchiness with uh, a lighter punk idea off the topic. Um, so we're doing these progier structural things in what I would consider punk is already a rather simplistic genre. Pop punk takes it a step further and really refines down any rough edges that were on it, any sort of... Um, forward or individualistic thinking and refines it down even more into something that is very standardized um, and palatable. It's really interesting then for me to hear this with this, this uh, I don't want to say advanced, but more complex uh, approach to the, the structure of it all. It's fascinating. It really is. Um, but they take it one step further, completely shattering any preconceived notions I have about this style of music. Because in our second bridge, not only have they, uh, you know, completely shattered my idea of, of how structure is going to be represented in these genres. But they also introduce something else that's a bit proggy, and that's polyrhythms. Or maybe I could even say polymeter. I had mentioned it at the end, but there's a higher pitched descending guitar lick at the end or in the in our second bridge. Uh, maybe it was ascending. I don't remember. Anyways, it was only three beats long. And that's the thing right there is that we're still in four four. Everybody else has four beat phrases and they only have three. So in our first bar, the first time we're introduced to this, both of our the band and our solo guitar beat one, beat two, beat three, they're all in line with each other. But when it comes to beat four, the band is finishing up their phrase while our lead guitar is beginning their phrase again. So when we get to beat one of the new bar and the band is starting their new idea, our lead guitar is on beat two of their phrase in the middle of it. And so it creates this um, this juxtaposition, this, this grinding of ideas. It is the heart of polyrhythmic and polymetric ideas both is these uh, competing concepts um, where an idea can start and stop at different times in the rest of the band and how is that going to clash or create new uh, new ideas because our second note we only had to make sure it paired well on beat two, whatever the rest of the band was playing at beat two. But now in this new bar, we have to make sure that it pairs well with everything on beat one of what the rest of the band is doing. Um, and so we get this uh, idea that only resets where both instruments land on beat one together on beat 13. Which is going to be at the beginning of the fourth bar, which disrupts the larger phrasing because now while both instruments, or uh, well, both parts, the band and the guitar, are both starting their ideas on beat one, the band is finishing up their four bar phrase. This is the final bar in their four bar phrase. We're beginning bar four. So it's going to take even longer until we actually reach a point where they both land on one. And the band is done with their four bar phrase because, of course, the guitar is only working with a, a one bar phrase, and one bar to them is only three beats. So it creates a lot of complexity through simplicity. You just need to write two things that have different lengths and let them go until they resolve themselves naturally, or unless you want to get in there and make a specific point. And maybe there was a point in there where uh, maybe in the fourth bar, it's not a three beat phrase. They force it into a four beat phrase so that it can all fit within four bars. I don't remember. I wasn't listening too closely to it uh, to see. But that is something you can do as a composer is to go in and force um, a polyrhythmic idea. Sorry, a polymetric idea because they're in two different meters. One's in three, four. One's in four, four. Um, to force them to resolve simultaneously at a specific part usually to fit some sort of phrasing, like a four-bar phrase. Um, but polymeter is just not something I expect in punk. Not like this. Um, and it's done so, and it was held off until we reached the part where I was like, oh, they're playing around with structure. Oh, they're playing around <laughs> with rhythm. Um, and they did it at the same time. So it was like, 
Uh, it was like a staggered carpet. It's like I was standing on two carpets, two rugs. I had the rugs pulled out for me, staggered, like one and then the other, not too long after that. Uh, real fun uh, experience with that. And then, of course, we just wrap the song up after that. We go into our, our final chorus, maybe our final verse chorus. Uh, as I mentioned, I can't remember if we did a final verse or not. So, where does this take me, right? We just, like, wrapped up what the song did. It is a punk track with really catchy ideas and some proggy concepts around rhythm and structure that were held off to the end of the track. I don't know. I think it's just a fun track. I do. Um, musically, the notes that are chosen for all of this, the sonic qualities here, the environments, I mean, it's just pop punk. It's energetic. It's fun. It's light. Hearted. It's not a track that's really trying to weigh you down. Um, it just has a lot of forward energy to it. And that energy is found not just in the rhythm, the tempo, the uh, ideas, but also in timbre, the vocal delivery, the guitar tones, uh, the tuning of the drum kit. Everything just has this light, brighter uh, tone to it that just screams punk to me there isn't anything in here that i think stands out as specifically warrior soul um it just sounds like my generic idea of what a punk track would be uh, so it's really hard for me to attribute anything to this specifically to warrior soul but they might just be a really great iterative punk band um i'm <clears throat> Sorry, I'm going to dig into the lyrics here, and while I'm at it, I'm also going to see what their top songs are, because something here really sounds like something I've heard before, and there's probably a popular track from them that gets played all the time that I've just never heard the band name with it. So I'm going to check that out, and maybe I'll have something at the end of this pause to uh, reflect on that as well. So a uh, couple things I've learned. One, this is probably not punk rock. <laughs> it still feels kind of punky to me, but um, Rate Your Music has it classified as hard rock. Although punk rock is in uh, a secondary genre, but it is not the primary genre. Also, the next thing that I kind of figured out is I listened to a couple other tracks from them. I just typed them into YouTube and you know clicked on a couple of the um, biggest tracks and skipped to the chorus. I don't know who these guys are, but they do have a hair metal vibe to them, which in retrospect, yeah, this was kind of hair metal-y. Not as strong as the bigs, um, and this was definitely after the popularity of hair metal, but it does feel like a hair metal band trying to be a bit harder. Um, so, yeah, a lot of interesting things there. Um, and like I said, I don't think I've heard anything from them. So it's probably another band I'm thinking of for, I don't know, for some reason. Uh, so then I got to the lyrics, though. And, I don't know. The chorus jumps between two styles. Uh, the first half says, take me out to the universe. You know, I can't stop. You can't stop me from loving you. Take my heart, let the pieces fall in the star bright sky and a piece of you. And there's a, a couple of uh, sexual innuendos in here, very typical for hair metal. And so I'm like, okay, you know, this is, uh, you know, this is a hair metal love song, right? Not a ballad, but uh, definitely about being in a relationship um, that you're excited about. But then we hit the post chorus after the second one, I think this was. And this is where our first deviation comes. And maybe this was actually the bridge. I can't remember. Um, 
says, uh, all I believe in, take the pretty pill. I'm riding the wave in television. You got a vision. And he repeats this a few times. And then we hear a variation on the chorus, take me out to the universe. Just like the other one started. But instead of going on to this idea of you can't stop me from loving you, you can take my heart, all this blah, blah, blah. Says, uh, you know, I'm moving too fast for the human racing. No one sees me when I'm falling. Television, you got a vision. Repeated four more times. When we get back to this chorus to end the song, we go back to this variation. Instead of going to the first one about you can't stop me from loving you, we go back to this idea of moving too fast for the human racing. Which is interesting, because it's not too fast for the human race. It's too fast for the human racing. Um, there's also, it seems, a bit of... Um, condemnation that would be the act of condemning something um possibly television or any of this new technology uh after our second bridge we go into a, a section that says screens like mansions on concrete steels break the will and ride the people new gods give for you to heal too bad you will never feel this seems to be about speaking about the dangers of technology. They've given us the boob tube and now we're going to be dumb. You know, we don't need to feel anymore. We just need to watch whatever dumb thing they put on in front of us. That, that whole kind of 90s anti-TV mentality that was going on. Um, but it's like... It makes me recontextualize it. Was this not a love song? Was this actually about a relationship with television? It says, take me out to the universe. You know, you can't stop me from loving you. You could metaphorically be so elated when you are around somebody to feel like you've been taken out to the universe. But the television is also something that could take you anywhere. You could watch anything on the TV, especially in the 90s. We were getting some really cool stuff. Is that what this is about then? Because if not, there is a really weird shift after our first bridge into the lyrical themes in the latter half of the song. Otherwise, you know, I have no idea how to reconcile these two sets of lyrics, but is this about being lured in by television and then understanding the truth of it and fighting against it? There's a lot of lines in here, though, that I don't quite understand within that context. Um, we also have, as hair metal is good at doing, allusions to drugs in here. It says, get down, I want to ride the wheel right now, and if you see me, drop a line and help me out riding the vision. Take a look for the new incision. Which I guess we could also take as a metaphor for the television. You know, television metaphorically could be a drug. It's an addiction, you know. So if you see me dropping a line, you know, if, if uh, you know, if, if you think that I've been watching too much TV, you should check me out. Figure out what's going on, right? If I'm acting different, is it the TV? But this also feels kind of weird for a hard rock band, <laughs> That might have been a hair metal band at one point, which to me has always been about counterculture. Uh, it's really weird for them to be digging into the anti-TV rhetoric of the time. So I honestly have no idea what's going on here. And since the music is rather typical for the style, there isn't anything in here that really stands out to me. It feels like they've the music and the lyrics were just written separately from each other, not designed to elevate one or the other. So I can't really read into the music to try to figure out what the track is supposed to be about. So I, don't, I don't know. You guys want to help me on this one? Uh, I'm all ears. Those are my thoughts on Warrior Souls Television. Do you enjoy it? Anything that stood out to you? Anything you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on? 
put that stuff down in the comments. Above that is the description box. You'll find a link to Linktree in there. It takes you to this menu. You can find ways to support the channel. You can find my music. You can find the Discord server. So much more. Go ahead and check that out. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three. All right, that wraps it up for today. I know it's only one video. It's uh, It's been a weird week. We're only going to have one video tomorrow as well. But uh, Saturday we'll have an album review. I want to stay on track with that. And Sunday we'll be doing our live stream. And then Monday, everything goes back to normal. So until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical of the music you listen to. And have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening. Whenever you choose to watch my videos. Thank you.